Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So let's say you're trying to make some coffee. This here is your filter, okay, and uh, and your coffee would slowly drip. Uh, the rate at which it's dripping is uh, 10 inches cubed per minute. So uh, so this distance here is 8 inches. Uh, this here is for the height is four. Uh, this is blah blah blah. When it's the, when the level here is dead on six inches, when it's dead on six, what is the speed at which it's falling? So so what is um what what, what, what is the rate at which it's falling? And then also when it's dead on six, what is the uh, the rate at which it's climbing? Okay. So uh, basically here work out um, work out the dh by dt. And uh, and this here should be um, a negative because it's going down, okay. And and then and then uh, when it's when it's dead on six here, what is what is the rate at which it's climbing? So dh by dt here it should be positive because it's it's gaining in height. Here it's losing in height, so it should be a negative. Blah blah blah. Find dh by dt for for both when um when when the height is dead on six inches, okay. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this here, um, uh, use this technique that we used in, in one of the earlier videos. Uh, this here, um, y y this bit here is quite confusing, but hang on, let's, let's, let, um, let's try and understand what's going on here. We, we've been given the, uh, dv by dt, which is this thing here. This is a change in volume over a period of time. So we've been given the, um, dv by dt. Now, um, we, we want to know uh, we want to know, really, we want to know dh by dt. We want to know the change in height. Um, so, so try and understand what's going on here. Um, the, 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 the thing that connects everything together is, uh, is the volume here. Okay. But, but the thing is, we want to know dh by dt. So, um, in a way, we've been given v, which is dv by dt here. We want to know in a way, age, but we don't want to know the radius. We don't really care about the radius. And and here we've got to use a technique that we used in um, in one of the earlier videos. We would use this to get rid of the uh, the uh, the radius here, to get rid of the radius here, because we've been given this. We want to know in a way. We want to know this. We don't want to know the radius. But when 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 uh, when you're being contained in this in this cone here, you have to obey this. Okay, so the ratio here, uh, four over eight, uh, equal blah blah blah. So um, so h, e, so r equals h over two. So now uh, so so when when um when 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 you're well, when the level of um so when when the uh, coffee when the volume of the coffee is falling um it, it has to obey this it has to obey this because it's in this container. So so we can put this into um into the R now. Okay. Well if you don't understand this bit here, watch one of the earlier videos. Okay. Um so hang on. That would then so so from here we would use implicit differentiation. So before you use implicit differentiation, uh try and think what's going on here. As as you have a change in as this is dripping, um V over a period of time, V changes. So V is a function of time. Um uh, if you if, if if you look at the the radius here, um, the radius here is also a function of time, and h here is also a function of time. Okay, but the thing is, the good thing is, we we're gonna we're gonna kill off this r by putting this into here. So we don't we don't really need the r here. But bear this in mind later on when we when you come to um to use implicit differentiation. So hang on. So uh so from here, uh put this. Put this into the R here. When you square it, it will give you this. Okay. So, uh, so that will then, that will then take you to here. Okay. Uh, that will then take you to here. And now use implicit differentiation. So, um, so because, because, uh, V is a function of time. Because if you look at this scenario here, um, over, because as it's, as it's dripping over a period of time, V is dependent on time, and also H is also dependent on time. The height, well, um, so when you come to use implicit differentiation here, uh, you need to stick the dV by dt in here. 
and then uh, differentiate the h, blah blah, that will give you this. But then because h is a function of time, you need to stick this in here. So basically, we've been given this. We want to know this. So um, so how so so now we need to know the the height. We need to know the height at that precise moment in time. Well, if you look at this here, at, at this precise moment in time, the the height is six. So we can put the six into the um, into the h. Okay, so that would give us uh, 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 so h squared here would be thirty six. Okay, and then um, and then and then oh and then uh, and then d uh, dv by dt would uh, up here dv by dt is stated as ten, but because we're losing the volume in in terms in terms of the it, because we're doing everything in 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 the perspective of the cone, we've got to because it's losing volume, we've got to stick a, a negative in there to indicate that we're losing volume. So when 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 you're here, when you're here, we know that it's losing volume, so minus ten. And then h we know at that precise moment in time, which we wanted to know, would be when h is six. So put six into here, that will then give you this. Um, and and you, we want to rearrange it so that the h by dt is a subject. So that will then give you this, and then um, and then divide both sides by this. So dh by dt is given by this. Okay. Um, I will continue in the next video.